Hi there. In this video, we're going to calculate the range of a projectile, but we're not going to do the formulas, a series of formulas that you may have learned. I'm going to show you this shortcut formula, a way that lets you go without breaking things down into X and Y components. So the formula looks a little different than some of the ones that you may have seen in class, where we're taking the range is V squared sine 2 theta all over the absolute value of G. The absolute value for G means that you're not going to put in a negative or a positive. You don't care about the direction of G. This doesn't factor in directions like vectors. It's just going to combine everything together and get one answer. So it should be pretty appealing for you in some ways. The tricks for this, though, or the things that caution I have to give you is that this only works when a projectile comes back to the same height from which it was launched. So if you kick a ball and it comes back and lands at the ground, the same height from where it was kicked is where it lands, then it is okay to use that formula. If, however, you kick the ball off of a cliff and it does not return to the same height from which it landed, then you cannot use the formula. It only works if you've come to the same height you started. Okay, so we got to emphasize that. Some questions, you can use this little trick. Other ones, you can't. All right, so let's define what each of these variables are. So we have a V squared. We have sine 2 theta. If your ball was kicked, so we have a ball that's sitting here. The speed along the hypotenuse, if it was kicked at a certain speed, this isn't a VX, nor is it a VY. The speed given would go right here in your formula, and you're squaring that. The angle it's kicked to the horizontal goes into the formula, but you double the angle. And we could prove it to you with an equation, but that's not the point of this video. It's just to show you why the, uh, not to show you why there's a two theta there, but to show you how it works. So the sine of twice the angle, you use V squared, and we're using the value of G, which is 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, and that'll give us the range. So it's much, much easier than some of the questions that we've done in the past. Okay, so let's look at a couple of specific examples. One of them, a ball is kicked at a velocity of 25 meters per second, and the angle is 40 degrees to the horizontal, and it wants us to determine the range. So my V is 25 meters per second. The angle it makes to the horizontal is 40 degrees, and it wants to know when this path comes down and lands, how far away did it go? What is the range? So we'll call that a capital R. That's what we're searching for, the range formula. Okay, so we'll bring our range formula down. To get the range, we take V squared. So my velocity is 25 meters per second squared. The sine of 2 times the angle of 40 degrees divide by 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, I'm not, the absolute value just means usually we would call the gravity 9.81 meters per second squared down and we'd make it a negative. We are not doing that in this case because it's the absolute value of that. You just use the positive. So we have 625 meters squared per second squared times the sine of 80 degrees over 9.81 meters per second squared. We'll bring up our calculator and work that out. So we have 25 squared times the sine of 80 degrees and divide by 9.81. And that gives us an answer of 62.7 meters. So about 63 meters is how far that that goes, way down the field. Okay, so let's do a different example because that's a pretty simple one going through. Let's find one has a little bit more words to it, see if it can get more complicated. So in our textbook, page 549, question 14, says that you want to shoot a stone with a slingshot and you want to hit a target that's on the ground 14.6 meters away. If you give the stone an initial speed of 12.5 meters per second, if we neglected friction, what would the launch angle need to be for
for that stone to hit the target. So that's the first part. A, what is the angle? B, what would the maximum height then be reached? And C, how long would it be in the air? What's the time of flight? All right, so the easiest way to get angle without getting the rest of that stuff is to use our formula. We know range is v squared sine of twice the angle divided by g. We want to know the angle, so we're going to isolate that in the formula. That means I'm going to take range, capital R, I'm going to multiply by g, and I'm going to divide by v squared. What that will give me is it will give me whatever the sine of twice the angle is. So I'm going to plug in some of those numbers. The range given in the question was 14.6 meters. The acceleration of gravity is 9.81 meters per second squared. And then the bottom we have v squared and the velocity was 12 and a half meters per second. We square that. So we need to take 14.6 times 9.81. Bring it back over here. So 14.6 times 9.81 and then divide by 12 and a half squared gives us 0 0.91664. Well that doesn't look like much of an angle and that's because it's not the angle. What that tells you is what the sine of twice the angle is. So sine of 2 times the angle is equal to 0 0.91664. So to solve for twice the angle, you're going to take the inverse sine, second function sine, of 0.91664. So we'll take inverse sine, bring the calculator back up. Second sine of that answer is 66.44 degrees. Of course, make sure your calculator is in degrees and not radians. You get 66.4 degrees. That's what 2 times the angle is. So if you cut it in half, you'll get what the actual angle is by dividing by 2. So 33.2 degrees is the angle that it was launched at to make it go as far as it went. Okay, so part A of the question, good to go. We now know the angle it was launched at. Now we need to know the maximum height reached by the stone and the time of flight. So on this, any trajectory, I haven't drawn it yet, I guess. So it's fired. We know it was launched at a 33 degree angle. So my angle is 33 degrees. We know that the launch was 12 and a half meters per second. We now know how far it went. It went a range of, or sorry, we always knew what the range was, 14.6 meters. We now want to figure out the height, the maximum height here. Okay, so the maximum height it's at its maximum height when its y velocity is zero. When it stops moving up and isn't moving down yet, it's at the maximum height. So if I knew my initial y velocity and my final, I can get the height. So I'm going to figure this part out first, vyi, and that is you to get v, y, i component here, it's cosine of theta, cosine of 33 times 12 and a half. Excuse me, it's sine of 33 times 12 and a half. So sine theta times 12.5 meters per second. The cosine would give you the vx. We want vy, so it's sine. So sine of 33, don't use the 66 that was sitting in your calculator, and times 12.5 will give us what Vy is. So I'll bring this back up. So we got to take the sine of 33 and multiply by 12 and a half. And that gives us, I'll try that again, sine of 33 and the bracket times 12 and a half gives us 6.80 or 6.81 if we round it off. So 6.81 meters per second is the initial y speed 
we know the final y speed is zero. We know gravity is pulling it with negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And we want to know what is the height. So we have a formula for that. The formula for that was our VYF squared my, uh, equals VIY squared plus 2GY. So we take VYF squared minus VIY squared is 2GY. Divide by 2G on both sides will give us a formula for Y. So we can erase that and just leave Y behind. So our VYF squared is 0. My VIY squared was 6.81. Divide by 2 times gravity, which is now a negative 9.81 meters per second squared. Why can I use negative now, or why must I? Because I'm dealing with components, the y component and the x component. Okay, so when we plug this into our calculator, you should get 2.38 meters when we plug that in. Okay, so the last part of this question, part C says, all right, tell me how long it is in the air for. Okay, so if I use a formula that tells me that the height at any given instant is VIYT can be determined as VIYT plus one half GT squared, when the height is zero, it's on the ground. So setting the height equal to zero, using my VIY of 6.81 meters per second, times time, then plus one-half negative 9.81 t squared. I'm running out of room, so I've got to move my formulas up. Okay, so we take factor common factor of t out of here. You have t bracket 6.81 minus the one-half of 9.81 is 4.905. The t squared, you remove 1 and it's left with t. Those two things equal 0. So we know that the first thing, t is equal to 0, or this second bracket, 6.81 minus 4.905t, is also equal to 0. We use that to solve. You take the 4.905 over to the other side. So 6.81 equals 4.905t. Divide by 4.905 on both sides. Cancels this out and just leaves what T is. And 6.81 divide by 4.905 gives you 1.39 seconds. So it takes about 1.4 seconds for it to hit the ground. It traveled at an angle of 33 degrees and it reached a maximum height of 2.38 meters. So solved all the parts of that question.